Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and may I take this opportunity to welcome you to Royal Holloway. This ceremony is being filmed, and the edited video will be made available to download from the graduation website. Please could you ensure that all mobile phones, tablet computers, pages and digital watches are either turned off or turned onto silent. In the unlikely event of an emergency, and should we need to evacuate the building, guests should leave by the nearest available exit. Guests requiring assistance will be escorted. Once you have left the venue, please follow the directions of the stewards who will guide you to the nearest assembly point. The ceremony will commence shortly and we ask that you do not leave the venue once the ceremony has begun. Ladies and gentlemen, please be upstanding for the arrival of the principal's procession.
please take your seats. Distinguished guests, parents, friends, and above all, graduates. On behalf of Royal Holloway, I'm delighted to welcome you here on this very important occasion, our graduation ceremony. It is wonderful to see so many people gathered here for this unique event, including those of you who are visiting for the first time, as well as those returning to a place that has become familiar. To you all, and especially those about to graduate, we extend a very warm greeting. During this morning's ceremony, graduates from the School of Economics, the School of Law, and the School of Politics and International Relations and Philosophy will be presented to the principal, Professor Paul Lazell. The first group of students will be awarded a postgraduate diploma or master's degree. These graduates have studied at postgraduate level for at least one year and have either taken studies to the boundaries of existing knowledge in their academic field or studied in an area of professional or occupational theory and practice at a high level. They will be followed by graduates who will be awarded the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Each of their research investigations has made an original contribution to knowledge through the discovery of new facts or ideas and the exercise of independent critical judgment. Please remain in your seats for the duration of the ceremony. The order of the presentation is set out in the graduation programme, which I hope you all have. I call upon the Dean of Management, Economics and Law, Professor Matthew Humphreys. Today we recognise and celebrate the achievements of our students who have studied in the Department of Economics and the School of Law. The Department of Economics has grown rapidly to become one of the major economics departments in Europe, drawing students from across the world to study finance, policy and of course fundamental economics. The discipline of economics is ultimately a practical one that carries the potential to improve policy over a wide range of issues. Indeed, staff have made notable contributions to understanding a wide range of topical phenomena, including, but not limited to, immigration, civilian casualties in war, and the economic impact of mining. The School of Law is home to the study of criminology, forensics, law, sociology, and social work. The school is strongly focused on the institutions and systems that provide the backbone of our justice and social systems, prisons, youth services, probation services, and of course the courts and institutions of state. Yet it also researches and teaches fun the fundamental concepts of justice, law and society, which combine to produce the governance and structures that provide benefits to us all. A degree at Royal Holloway opens the door to our graduates to take up positions in public or private institutions, including many roles in major companies as well as the voluntary sector and to do so anywhere in the world. It is now with great pleasure that we move to the presentation of graduates. I call upon Dr. Vinay Nandal from the Department of Economics. Principal. I would like to present graduates from the Department of Economics. For the award of Masters of Science degrees in Economics. Highest overall mark, Denise Saribe Yo Lu. For the award of Master of Science degrees in Finance. <clears throat> Afi Ali. <clears throat> Adel Ahmad Noor Mohammed Al Zaruni.
Neha Bansal. Mihai Budaka. <laughs> Lucas Fabri da Silva. <laughs> Harry Gallo. Jan Gesten Kohn. Christopher Haywood. Dario Hall. Andrew Holm. <laughs> Rong Zheng Hu. <laughs> Tyler Lee. Asilai Nargilova. <laughs> Alima Satya Baldina. <laughs> Françoise Falsin. Joseph Shepherd. <laughs> Yu Chin. <laughs> Kong Shu. That concludes the presentation of graduates from the Department of Economics at this ceremony. I call upon Dr. Emily Glorney from the School of Law. Principal, I would like to present graduates from the School of Law. For the award of Masters of Science degrees in Forensic Psychology, Katie Binder. <laughs> Stephanie Burney. Jessica Brooks. <laughs> Dion Chorley. <laughs> Francesca Cole. Deep Dami Adam Fedorniak
for the Prize for the Excellence in, pra in Scientist Practitioner Skills, Grace Franklin. <laughs> Sonia Galloway. Ellie Harvey. <laughs> Peter Hastings. <laughs> Nicole Hudson. Bethan Humphreys. <laughs> James Jackman. <laughs> Saliha Javed. Emma Lazelle. <laughs> Jack Moss. <laughs> Alice Norman Taylor. Kelly Palomino Rodriguez. Rodriguez. <laughs> Sanu Patney. <laughs> Ashley Peed. Chloe Porter. <laughs> Nawal Raza Malik. <laughs> Catherine Rowland. Jessica Taylor. <laughs> Annabelle Thomas. Sharice <laughs> Williams. concludes the presentation of graduates from the School of Law at this ceremony. Some members of the choir of Royal Holloway will now perform My Spirit Sang All Day and Lyndon Lee.
call upon the Dean of Arts and Social Sciences, Professor James Knowles. The next part of the ceremony will be to recognise and celebrate the achievements of our students who have studied in the area of social sciences. In this ceremony, we will be honouring those students who have studied in the School of Politics, International Relations and Philosophy. In all these fields, students are taught by academics who engage in the top fields of research and practice. Their esteem is demonstrated by the high number of prize-winning staff within the faculty. At Royal Holloway, these disciplines enjoy an enviable reputation for the quality of the research of staff and the teaching expertise that they offer students, much of which is top rated in national research and teaching assessments. We've celebrated many recent achievements over the last academic year and highlights of funded staff research in the School of Politics, International Relations and Philosophy include Dr. John Sellers, who teaches philosophy and was one of the organizers of Stoicon, an annual convention dedicated to Stoicism. The press coverage he received following this, this conference led to a Daily Mail article on how to live like a Stoic for a week. Dr. Nicholas Allen, whose work covers political ethics and integrity, as well as elections and prime ministers, was the recipient of the Political Studies Association's Richard Rose Prize, which is awarded annually to an early career scholar who's made a distinctive contribution to the study of British politics. And we're most pleased that Professor Chris Hanratty, the head of the school, was awarded the highly prestigious Philip Lever Hume Prize to continue his work on electoral behaviour in the UK, looking in particular at how different demographic groups can tip the result in different constituencies. Students who have studied for master's degrees in politics and international relations have gone on to successful careers within the culture and heritage industries, publishing, marketing in the media, and in policy work. Indeed, many students go on to work in areas of government policy, um, such as in areas such as climate change, migration, sustainable development, or within the environmental agencies. Many of our master students have also succeeded in winning the highly competitive awards to pursue doctoral study, either at Royal Holloway or elsewhere. And our doctoral students, some of whom are graduating today, achieve success in obtaining jobs as lecturers or researchers within higher education, or working with the research councils or in government and similar bodies. So it is now with great pleasure that we move to the presentation of graduates. I call upon Professor Chris Hanretti from the School of Politics, International Relations and Philosophy. Principal, I would like to present graduates from the School of Politics, International Relations and Philosophy. For the award of Postgraduate Diploma in International Relations, <coughs> Rsultan Babayeva. <clears throat> Jamil Eniola. Nathaniel Adesanya Shine. <laughs> Naila Atar. <laughs> Azura Grimaldi. Constantinos Koronsis. <laughs> Sam Pickering. <laughs> 
for the award of Master of Arts degrees in Politics of Development, Lawrence Gray Coombs. Benjamin Dupre. For the award of Master of Science degrees in Elections, Campaigns and Democracy, Neil Davies. Innocent Nkume. Joseph Nutt. For the award of Master of Science degrees in International Public Policy, Claudio Aguiar Brito. For the award of Master of Science degrees in International Relations, Pirana van Balendran. <laughs> Diana Barnier. <laughs> Connor Kavanagh. Dina Monji Ali Mohammed. <laughs> Kim Moodley. <laughs> Irene Moore. Isenwa Emmanuel Olumba. <laughs> Lydia Painter. <laughs> Madeline Rencher. Louise Scott. <laughs> Neha Soni. <laughs> Hamid Tarin. Niklas Valin. <laughs> For the award of Master of Science degrees in International Security, Alia Mohammed Roslan. <laughs> Monica Terani. James Warner. <laughs> For the award of Master of Science degrees in Media, Power and Public Affairs, Mohammed Anwar. <laughs> James Crump.
Rebecca Gatfield. Isabel Hughes. Daniel Johnson. Louise Jones. Paulina Kurtipova. Priyanka Sharma. <laughs> Stephanie Stark. <laughs> For the award of Doctor of Philosophy degrees in politics, with a thesis on the title the Emptiness of Cosmopolitanism, Reimagining Cosmopolitan Critical Theory Through the Concept of Emptiness, Fudo and Aidagara, supervised by Julia Gallagher and the late Professor Chris Mumford, Michael Murphy. That concludes the presentation of graduands from the School of Politics, International Relations and Philosophy. That concludes the presentation of graduands at this ceremony. The principal will now make a closing address. Graduates, let me once again add my welcome to this graduation ceremony in which we achieve, uh, which we celebrate your achievements as part of the graduating class of 2018. Graduation marks the culmination of your studies and it allows time to celebrate and reflect with fellow graduates, with staff, family and friends and it marks a new transition or marks a transition into a new stage of your life. Um, I and all my colleagues here on the platform are honoured to join you today and we hope that your new degree will lead you on a career path that is both rewarding and enjoyable. This landmark day is part of your educational journey that started long before you joined Royal Holloway for gaining a place required you to achieve exceptionally high levels of academic performance. Whilst at Royal Holloway, You've worked with staff who are leaders in their field and in the departments that have a global reputation. The nature of your study at postgraduate level has required you to understand and synthesise a wide body of knowledge. Through dissertations or theses, you've tested and critiqued that knowledge to gain insight and to extend it to create new ideas and new understanding. Ideas and understanding that now equip you to tackle the challenges ahead. Now, in getting to this point, all of you will have been supported by parents, families and friends. And so to each of them joining us today, I'd like to add my welcome to you, to Royal Holloway, whether you're from the UK or from one of the 120 countries represented by our international student community. I'm sure you are as proud of our graduate success as they are grateful to you for the support and encouragement that you've given them. So on their behalf, I'd like to thank you for the difference that you've made to them during, the study, during their studies. And I'd encourage you to be proud of your contribution too as we celebrate their achievements today. And I'd ask the graduating class, most of you sitting over there, some of you at the back there, to join with me and acknowledge and thank you for that support. Thank you very much. Now, 
uh, to our graduates, as well as support from your family and friends, your achievements have been made possible by your teachers and supervisors, for whom today is special as well. Academic colleagues have taught, guided, and supervised you to become another generation of uh, thoughtful, uh, capable, and ambitious Royal Holloway graduates. You've benefited from learning alongside world-leading <laughs> teachers and researchers, whose own achievements were, I'm sure, part of the attraction in coming to this university. The range of work undertaken by our staff is truly inspiring, and we heard a snapshot of that work from the, the deans, uh, the two deans, in their introductions as well as the highlights that are listed in today's programme that covers not just the departments that we've seen today, but the, the right across the university, including leadership in the field of cybersecurity, virtual reality, quantum computing, uh, helping to save endangered species and improving the environment, and uh, using sport in the rehabilitation of offenders. This work and many other activities have helped to improve uh, your classes and your supervision ably uh, assisted by a wide range of support staff. But ultimately, it's your hard work and dedication that has enabled you to succeed today. Now, while some of you have taken degrees to continue an academic or research career, most of you will have taken programmes to develop higher level skills and knowledge that will equip you to work in a chosen profession. In a highly competitive global employment market, your new degree will help you stand out in the crowd, and I encourage you to be proud of your achievements. Those achievements and those of our academics that we heard about earlier on are all the more impressive because they're not self-judged, they are confirmed by others. For example, uh, this university has risen in all three of the major newspaper league tables for British universities. And thanks to our global community, you and our staff, uh, the, the, what you represent, uh, makes us one of the most international universities in the UK. The UK government has also recognised the quality of the research work that's undertaken by our staff here at Royal Holloway, over 81% of it being classified as world-leading or internationally excellent, a measure that directly impacts your experience as postgraduate students. But of course, success should never make us complacent. And we recognise here at Royal Holloway that we need to continue to invest if we're going to offer world-class uh, teaching and research in the future. Some of you will have benefited from those past investments in our teaching and research spaces, as well as the new library, study and social spaces in the Emily Davidson building next door. Together with the recent opening of our new science building, we've recently completed a £160 million investment programme designed to improve the education experience of all our students, and we're planning the next phase of that investment. Some of you graduating today will also have benefited directly from the investment made by former students and supporters. Last month, in an intense week-long competition, they raised over £120,000 through generous donations from supporters and former students, and matched funding from the Reed Foundation. Through the generosity of those former donors, of, of former donors, and indeed those that donated recently, you may well have received a scholarship or other financial support that's helped you in your studies. Through those investments and our investments and those, uh, the support of our donors, your university will continue to grow and develop, and will keep you informed of our progress in future through regular newsletters which we'll send to you as part of your membership of our Alumni Association, Association for Former Students. This association plays an important role in continuing your links with us, but most importantly, with links uh, amongst yourselves. It organises networking events to help you develop your professional life ahead, as well as reunions and informal get-togethers. It also provides an opportunity for you to give us your news, which we're always uh, l love to hear, so that we can continue to be informed and <clears throat> continue to celebrate your continued success. So as we now conclude the formal part of today's graduation, let me once again reflect on your tremendous achievement. Your degree certificates are a testament to hard work, intellectual capacity and perseverance. But as you now leave this place, those certificates are also statements of future potential. While celebrating what's been achieved, it's important that each of you now thinks about what you are yet to achieve. The past is a vital ingredient in making you the person you are, but it's what you do next that will ultimately define you. 
Many of you have already started full-time employment. Others of you will be undertaking a period of voluntary or humanitarian work. Some of you may be taking a break and others continuing your studies. Whatever your next steps, I and all the university staff wish you every success in your chosen endeavour. Thank you. I hope you have enjoyed this morning's ceremony. Please remain in the venue until the procession has left the auditorium. When you leave, you will be directed to Founders Dining Hall for our reception. Please rise for the recession. Ladies and gentlemen, please please stay in your seats until the graduates have left the auditorium. Once the graduates have left, please follow them over to the reception in the Founders Building. Thank you.